Hello valued viewers, I hope you are all doing very well. This video discusses the topic of nuclear locomotives and whether or not the technology was there to implement such a, such a locomotive or was it feasible. So without further ado, let's dive into this. And let me just start off by saying that once nuclear power was revealed via the atomic bombs, the imagination of practical use of nuclear energy went wild. I mean, anything and everything could be nuclear powered at that time. Back then, especially in the 1950s, the possibilities were endless. So the concept of nuclear powered trains first surfaced seriously in the 1950s when the idea became an official technical goal of the Ministry of Transportation in the old Soviet Union. And their talks of nuclear powered trains was very real and very encouraging to them. And on a very basic level, the idea seemed reasonable at the time to them because the dangers of nuclear reactors are not widely known. And of course, locomotives had been a constant resource for transportation of all kinds of goods, useful both in speed and the amount of cargo they transported. And furthermore, of course, locomotives are used in every country of the world. Of course, the downfalls of that technology, that locomotive technology, was the fact that they use fossil fuels. And thus, you know, they leave a carbon footprint every time they operate. The concept of the nuclear-powered train was the potential for reducing both cost and CO2 emissions. The possible benefits of having nuclear-powered trains include economically and transport efficiency, lower emissions, and ease of hauling cargo over great distances. Rail is already the greenest method of long-haul transportation, but is going greener worth the trouble? Is it a good idea to have a moving bomb on rails? And what about the security of such locomotives to prevent someone from going in and getting enough material to make something like a dirty bomb? So, when considering using nuclear power in a railroad setting, there are many, many safety things to consider and how you're going to implement those safety uh, procedures and protocols. So, using a nuclear reactor to power a locomotive would require fitting a nuclear reactor on a locomotive and surrounding this reactor with the ne necessary safety features. These would range from encasing the reactor to ensure control of emissions to having an army on board of the, uh, on the train to help ward off any terrorists that might be looking to get their hands on a miniature nuclear reactor, which is the exact point that I was alluding to earlier. Fitting a small reactor in a locomotive is technically feasible, as it has been done on submarines. And nuclear-powered uh, submarines became reality in the early 1950s when the launching of the USS Nautilus, which, be which in itself was possible from the brilliant mind of Admiral Rickover. Somebody of which, if you were actually going to build a nuclear-powered train, he would be the first person that I would get a hold of and get technical ideas from. And shoot, he might have been willing to even develop the whole thing by himself. But anyhow, innovation is typically advantageous for society, but the risk-reward for completing these trains and implementing them, is the cost is just too high in my opinion. And not only the cost, but the safety risk and the security risk, the whole nine yards. And the cost of maintaining nuclear-powered anything is enormous. Even the U.S. Navy took nuclear power out of surface combatant warships outside of aircraft carriers because of cost. So whatever the Russians' motives actually were, or anybody in the United States considering this possibility, what their motives actually were, safety must always remain the utmost importance in anything, especially when you're dealing with nuclear power. And quite frankly, putting on a locomotive in a railroad service just doesn't seem safe altogether in my mind. Something bad is bound to happen. So just to tell you how serious some of these nuclear locomotive ideas were, the U.S. Patent Office had allowed patents for nuclear locomotives. They actually allowed them. And this has pushed uh, designs for locomotives to successfully use a nuclear reactor for propulsion to be developed. And the basic premise of these designs is as such as the locomotives carry a small portable nuclear reactor that heats a fluid to boiling and passes it through electric turbine engines to produce electrical power. The fluid slash steam then recirculates through the cooling radiators, condensing it back to liquid before it passes back into the reactors again. And as such, this electric power would be used to power and cool the electromagnets which help the train go. 
it would be interesting to see if nuclear trains came up uh, to reality in our world, considering we already have developed electrical powered trains, which essentially are just as efficient and could, in fact, be powered from an electrical or nuclear power plant for safe from a safe distance. Meaning it's a it's a way from any railroad lines and any terrorists trying to commandeer a nuclear bomb. And one other major country, the United Kingdom, is also into the nuclear locomotive idea because they're promoting nuclear power as green energy. So here in the United States, the interest in a nuclear powered locomotive came in the 50s as really part of the Atoms for Peace program. And the idea behind this locomotive was to equal or greatly exceed four F units lashed up in tandem. The trouble was that because of the radiation shielding required, it made the locomotive so heavy that half of the horsepower is needed just to get the locomotive to move. And let's not even get into the complexity of the design itself. And when you consider all the cost and of, of building the thing and maintaining it and whatnot, there wasn't going to be any railroads interested in this technology. And when you throw in the risk of radioactive contamination, if there's a derailment or a serious accident, that pretty much put the kibosh on the whole idea here in the United States. But one such nuclear-powered locomotive project was named the X-12. And this locomotive concept was created by Dr. Lyle Boris and his physics students at the University of Utah and after consulting the Association of American Railroads. If this locomotive was built, the locomotive came in two sections and overall the locomo locomotive would be 160 feet long and would be powered by a steam generating atomic reactor and a 200 ton shield to contain its intense radiation. The whole engine would weigh a massive 360 tons and its wheels would be driven by electric motors. The reactors themselves were designed by Babcock and Wilcox Company, which is also a boiler company, and it consists of a cylinder tank three feet in diameter and a foot long, filled with a solution of fissionable U0235. As the control rods were withdrawn, chain reaction in the uranium heats the solution to 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Water piped into thousands of tubes running through the cylinder is turned to steam by re the reactor's heat. After passing through a moisture trap, the steam goes on to turn the turbine, which drives four electric generators, two on each side of the reactor shield. And this theoretically produced 7,000 horsepower. Once leaving the turbine, the steam is reconverted to water by a condenser and then flows back into the reactor once more. Since a second water system is necessary to cool the condenser, Dr. Borst's designs called for a 65-foot radiator car behind a locomotive. Cold water from this car enters the condenser at the bottom, flows upward through it, and it's heated as it condenses the steam. The water then returns to the radiator car for cooling. Because the steam generated in the reactor is slightly radioactive, it cannot be used to heat the train, and an additional steam generator is provided for those purposes. Dr. Borst estimated that it would cost $1.2 million to build his locomotive, which is almost twice the price of a four-unit diesel of comparable power. And that cost equivalates to roughly $24.5 million. That's what it would cost for one of these nuclear locomotives back in 1954. So to wrap this up, were nuclear locomotives actually being designed? And the answer is obviously yes, they were, by both the Russians and the United States. Are they feasible? And for me, in my opinion, emphatically, no. And here and now, and going into the future, are they feasible? Once again, no. But it was a part of U.S. history when it comes to the development of nuclear power in the 1950s. And as I said, the imaginations ran rapid with the possibilities. And there's absolutely zero wrong with having innovative ideas. And that goes from the 1950s all the way through to, to today and our tomorrows. So with that, I'll wrap up the video by saying thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button. And if you've not subscribed, please su subscribe as both features help the channel grow immensely. And also visit our print shop at NickelPlateLimited on Etsy.com if you want to help to support the channel in that way and outside of the Super Thanks button. Thank you very much.